it recording. <laughs> Oh, it's not on your computer somewhere? Yeah, but it's in writing. So anyway, happy to be here today. Happy Friday, Miss Terry. Thank you for visiting with Odo Synergy Services, Women of Color Entrepreneur Network here in Silicon, sunny Silicon Valley in the mid of the pandemic. Are you safe, Miss oh, Terry? I'm, I'm extremely safe. Are you sheltered in and safe? And safe? <laughs> I've been in here so long. I'm definitely safe, and I hope everybody out there is safe, too. I know that you're safe. I do monitor your posting to make sure you're masked up and isolating and all that. This is and actually, you take really, really good care of me. I have a lot of followers, but you're always there rooting for me, and you can, you can tell when, you know, I'm up and I'm up in energy and you're with me in the upside and then you can tell when I'm down and I'm feeling kind of low and you're with me, inspire me on the down. So I really appreciate you for that. Thank you for saying that. I, I'm, I'm totally on board with your mission. I think it's amazing what you're doing. I'm uh, just astonished at the way you're able to marshal all the energy to just keep moving <laughs> and, you know, do so much. It's coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Starbucks. <laughs> No, I have a great team of, of three people, uh, really more like, yeah, well, three, three halves <laughs> who believe in the mission and what we're doing. But we're all, that's why we're here. We have a sisterhood. We're partner. We're building and getting ready for this whole new um, global econ economy journey. And that's why you're here today. So we can talk about what you're doing um, with the Renaissance, uh, the role of the Renaissance and empowering small businesses here in the state of California. So tell us a little bit about um, the Renaissance Center and what's going on over there. Uh, thank you. So I'm a consultant, a small business consultant with the Renaissance Entrepreneurship Center. Um, I'm working out of the East Palo Alto office. We also have other offices in San Jose, um, Richmond, and in the Bayview. Um, the, the vision and mission of Renaissance Center is to support and encourage and give uh, tools for success to people starting businesses. Uh, people who are generally don't have ac the generational access to um, resources, to knowledge, and to the tools that will allow them to succeed. So we offer a variety of different services, um, classes, and support on how to write your business plan, you should start a business, how to structure it, um, legal issues, accounting issues, um, funding, um, and marketing support. Right and now, too, I have a lot of friends in the program who have really benefited benefit from the program. And also, Renaissance in Richmond, that's my hometown. That's where I was born. So that's my hood. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we pride ourselves in always being in the hood. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, but right now, um, this week and up through the end of July, I am focusing heavily on a government program that probably everyone has heard of, the Paycheck Protection Program, PPP, right. uh, which provides some funding to businesses that are having a difficult time during the pandemic for various reasons. Um, and I want to just dispel a few, I guess, misapprehensions about that program. So it's called the Paycheck uh, Protection Program. Right. And so people think that unless they have a number of employees, they're not eligible to apply. Um, I'm one of those people, right? We talked a little bit about that. I'm one of those people. I have, I'm one. I'm an mm -hmm. employee of one. So yeah. Right. So you're, if you're the sole employee, if your business is structured as a sole proprietorship, you are still eligible and there's a very simple application process to get you into that. So mm -hmm. all you need to do is have your, ta uh, your tax return from last year available and a few other um, items that are easily accessible. And uh, the application process takes, I would say you can get through it in under an hour and then we'll go through the underwriting process and then you get funding. So. So would they have to have a Schedule C and what are some of the other documents that uh, Absolutely. Schedule C, if you're a sole proprietor, if your business is structured differently, such as an LLC or uh, S Corp or something like that, 
your documents would be different. You might have a 940, a 941, um, but again, it's documents that are, especially since the tax uh, filing deadline is already passed, you ought to have to hand um, easily to support that application. What, what about nonprofits? Nonprofits also can apply. You would have your 990 uh, from 2019. So as long as you're in operation at, during 2019, preferably the entire year, because that would maximize the amount that you could apply for. But even if you started mid last year, as long as your bottom line is positive, if you're, if you're a for-profit organization, or you have uh, uh, a 940 or 941 with some information on it, um, we can use that to support your application. What if, what if, you know, as a startup, we didn't make any money last year, there was no revenue gen generated, what, how would that apply? Right. So if you're a for-profit business and your net income is zero or negative, then there's no basis for you to apply for the loan, unfortunately. Right. So that is the one thing that might disqualify you. However, I would still encourage you to reach out because we have other loan and grant opportunities uh, through um, the Renaissance Center. Um, once you uh, come in and you are a, a, a client of one of the consultants, then you are eligible to be considered for those different grants and loans. Okay. Yeah. So I want to I want to also address the a fear that I have observed. Uh, in the small business community, uh, and I think it's an it's a reluctance to take on debt because the economic situation is so shaky right now. Um, the PPP loan it is a loan when you first take it out. However, there are the goal of that program is to convert that uh, those funds into a grant that will not ever have to be paid back. So. The process for applying for forgiveness of that loan is similar to the application process. You fill out a, a form, which again has all the inf similar information to what you would provide on your tax return. Um, and then you wait for uh, the SBA to approve that. Um, and you apply through the same funder who funded your loan in the first place. So it's the same group of people that have your information to begin with. Um, the terms are even worst case scenario, if you, failed to apply for forgiveness and or you were um, rejected, which is, I haven't heard of that happening or it doesn't seem unlikely at this point. Um, I should say it doesn't seem likely at this point. Okay. Uh, the worst case scenario is that after the uh, safe harbor period or the period in which you are expected to spend those funds, you have a 10 month deferral period and then uh, interest would start to accrue. So no interest for a good year after your disbursement period. And then if you had to pay the loan back, it's spread over five year period and the interest rate is only 1%. So if you need funds for your business to grow your business and you somehow miss um, having that loan forgiven, the loan terms are far superior to anything that you can get anywhere um, for funding. So what, what constitutes a forgiveness? So forgiveness just means that you do not have to pay it back. And so you need to meet certain criteria. You need to have spent um, at least 60% for people who are not sole proprietors. You need to have spent at least 60% of that loan of the loan proceeds on payroll. If you're a sole proprietor, your payroll consists of net income. So you do not have to prove that. So I'm a sole proprietor, but I only have one employee. Uh, many so, sole proprietors only have one employee. So, so I, your, I'm sorry. On your Schedule C, um, the number that your loan would be based on would be your net income. So I just have to spend that money within a certain time frame on, on my business as a sole proprietor. Yes. I mean, well... Um, it's um, so I think the loan program was really structured for other business structures in this whole process. Exactly. But that's what we need to clarify. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to describe exactly how they're going about it, but the payroll is considered to be your net income. Just okay. the fact that you have net income is 
constitutes your payroll since you are the sole employee and you're taking that net income as your income. Um, I do want to mention, though, that the if the loan is forgiven and you don't have to pay it back, it will be taxable just as your net income would have been taxable. So, so, but the thing is, I think the fear and the anxiety around taking out the out the loan is, um, you know, if we get to the point where they make a determination that it has to be paid back, and I'm stuck with with paying it back, and if I don't have any you know, my business is not thriving. I don't have any means to pay that loan back over the next couple of years. Let's assume the pandemic, this, I mean, we're going to have a lot of fallout because of the pandemic. We're, you know, we're, for all intents and purposes, we're in a recession, right? If not a depression mm -hmm. right now, right? And so what if I get in a situation where I can't pay that loan back, you know? I can't, my fear is filling out the application, getting all that wonderful money, and then having to wait around for someone to make a determination that um, it's going to be forgiven. And then if it's not forgiven, I'm up a tree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand that. I don't know where my money's coming from in the future. If I'm a small business under fifty thousand dollars, making fifty thousand under fifty, so the Odo's criteria now is small businesses, home-based businesses, fifty thousand or below. We know the government uh, criteria, micro business criteria, is what two hundred fifty thousand yeah. um, dollars and below. And so we know a so lot we of know. the women we know, they have side gigs working at home creating a lot of these um, products and services out of their kitchen. And so they're making way less they're than dollars a year. So what if it gets to a point where I can't pay that loan back? So those are some of the fears and the anxiety about, you know, not taking out the loan and just kind of assuming that I'll have money or income coming in to pay that loan. Mm -hmm. And and I have a lot of friends that have jobs and side gigs. Like I have mm -hmm. a friend that has the Airbnb in Arizona. She got, I don't know, like something like $11,000, right? So a lot of people that are taking out the loans, they have jobs. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people like me, I don't have a job. Right. And so, and I'm building an organization. And so I have no income coming in. So those are some of the challenges that we, you know, a lot of the fear is based on. Yeah, I, I get that. It sounds scary. You know, I, I can say, this is all I can say. We have not gone through the forgiveness process yet uh, okay. because the safe harbor period is not over yet. But from the criteria that have been mentioned, it is, hard to see how someone, unless you have a big business and you laid everybody else and you didn't hire them back, um, that would be a way that you wouldn't be forgiven. If you're a sole proprietor, there's almost no way to see how, I can't see how you wouldn't be forgiven because just the net income itself is your payment and you're the sole proprietor getting it. So um, there's no basis to deny you unless you were fraudulent in your application or you know, I'm just trying to imagine some way that you wouldn't be forgiven. I don't, I don't see it. Obviously, we, I can't guarantee anything. Yeah, and we don't have any, we don't have any um, examples or people that have been forgiven, right, to draw from, to say, well, look at this scenario. This scenario is similar to, you know, your scenario. So this could apply for you where you will be forgiven. So we don't really have you know, we don't have a crystal ball to tell us, oh, okay, look at this example over here. And so that's mm -hmm. part of the challenge too, because, you know, in these times for me, I had friends call me, hey, why don't you apply? Why don't you apply? It's like, you have a job. I don't. Mm -hmm. so, I guess, so I would say if that's um, a serious concern of yours, you could always apply. You could get the funds. You could put them aside so they're forgiven before you spend them. So, you know, it's, 
that way you don't have a risk. If it if for some odd reason that's unforeseeable, you wouldn't get um, be forgiven. You can always just send the funds back. But, but I um, need that, but, you, but Terry, that's counterproductive because I need the money, right? I know. Get the money. Get the money. It's I like mean, I need the money. On one hand, it's like that's why you know we're hearing these stories of people. Um, uh, they're getting laid off. And I, I've heard some weird stories where people are quitting, but you can't quit and get unemployment. So people are, they're getting laid off, right? And then they're, they're living high on the hog on the unemployment and the, the extended unemployment through uh, the PPP, right? Or through unemployment, right? And so, but it's like, but wait a minute, what are you gonna do when that money is gone? Right. I mean, you still have a mortgage. You still have expenses. You still have. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's it, we're kind of like in this little mouse trap right mm -hmm. now. Yeah, and, I, I, and I try and create content. I always try um, when I'm on my upside. It's like there's a contingency plan for everything. Right. We got to create mm -hmm. contingency plans. We got to create. You know, we have, we see all these grants going on right now, and now. We're seeing, I'm talking to my entrepreneur friends across the country, and because we have such an ab abundance of people applying for the grants, the now the grants are sending notes back saying, sorry, we can't respond right now, right? Mm -hmm. And so now that's another challenge because they need that money to pour into their business or survive, and now they're not hearing their application process is going into the grant in, in the black hole. And so we don't know, we don't know what the government's going to do about this. I know it's just, um, on one hand, we're, we're, we should be grateful that we have these options and resources, but it's kind of like they're like band-aid ap approaches, right? Um, well, I mean, again, worst case scenario, you would never, as if you, if you intend on having an online business, you need funding you would never find a better, the worst case scenario would be a 1% loan that doesn't even start accruing interest for a whole year. So you would never find any other source of funds as favorable as that. And that Absolutely. is the worst. So, um, are, unless the government wants to give away some free, free money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you never find the that forgiveness, out. right? But <laughs> we don't know that, what that, the percentages are of people receiving the per, the forgiveness funds too so well and, and that information won't be available for several months after the program closes so i'm urging people don't miss out because of fear i mean if as a small business owner you already have overcome a whole lot of fears and adversity to get where you are um so don't miss out on this opportunity to survive the pandemic because you're afraid you know there's you know Lots and lots of other people are benefiting. You should too. I, I want to see people in. I want to get as many people in this coming week um, as possible to get their applications in. Can and, you give your uh, email and phone well, number and contact information for the community, for small businesses in the community, so they can reach out to you? Yes. Do you want me to say it? I'm going to type it into chat. Is that okay? Sure. And I'll, I can. Um, Oh, you can say it out loud too, and, and we'll type it in the chat because it'll be in okay. the. I'm just going to give you my, I'll give you the number for uh, the Renaissance Center, and then I'll also give you my direct phone number. Okay, great. So the Renaissance Center number is 650 321 2193. My direct number is 650 468 07. Eight zero seven zero two and six five zero eight. Okay, so six five zero four six eight zero zero seven zero two zero seven zero two. And then, do you have uh, an email? Oh, my glasses are crooked. Do you have any email where people can uh, maybe just want to email you questions initially? Yeah, sure. I'll just give you my personal email. It's my name at yahoo.com. So Terry Crenshaw at yahoo.com. I'm typing it in the chat. T E R R I E C R E N S H A W at yahoo.com. Awesome. And that's the Renaissance Center. Any other, um, what, what, 
what hours are you guys available um, to take appointments and questions? Um, it varies. So basically just reach out and then we'll make an appointment. Okay. So I know that a small business owners, some people are busy in the morning, some people are busy in the evening. Um, I try to be flexible. Okay, so real flexible there. And then what's the turnaround time once they submit the application? What's the turnaround time that they hear back from from, uh, from the funder? Uh -huh. Only a few days. Once the application is complete and everything, you know, we they, they may come back and forth. There's some questions that come back. Uh, once everything has, all the questions have been satisfied, the turnaround is about four or five days. So, in case someone is declined, I know you've had some people that have been, have declined, right? So would you recommend that they reapply? Um, that depends. So I've only had one person be declined and that was just because the, the amount they asked for was too small, oh. not because there was a problem. Yeah. <laughs> they don't want to. Well. <laughs> so, so what's, let me give an example of what's too small. Hold on one second. So the, um, the loan amount, if you're a sole proprietor, is based on an average of two and a half months of your net income for 2019. So some people, for example, in an unusual year where they had a lot of expense, a lot of things to expense, and their net income was very low. If, if the amount is a few hundred dollars, I don't think they're going to do it. But you know, for small business owners, a few thousand dollars can be a lot. Yeah. And don't hesitate to apply if your net income isn't enormous. Um, are you seeing a lot of, um, are you seeing a lot of our sisters in small home-based businesses applying? Um, sometimes. Um, I've had, I did have some people drop out of the process, which was disappointing. And then some people can't qualify, but I am heartened by the number of people who are interested and I really want to get a whole lot more people in. So please reach out to me. Um, if we can get you this money, definitely want to do that. Are there any, are you guys have any other grants or programs that people would qualify for or be available to um, access? We sure do. We have a whole bunch of them all the time. So Basically, we look at our database of, cli of clients um, who have provided basic information about their businesses. And whenever we get a grant or loan, or usually grant possibilities, we go over that list to see who might be eligible and we reach out to them. What's happening in the future? We know that Congress is um, going, to, they're looking at recommendations all the time. What is your, if you could look into your crystal ball. <laughs> <laughs> if I only had your, ma your magical crystal ball. <laughs> what do you, what do you anticipate is going to happen down the line for um, entrepreneurs in terms of, of resources? Our, our group, we're trying to target the small um, micro businesses um, in the future, in the, in the next year or so. So as a finance person, I totally avoid predicting the future, but I can't. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> I can <Learn>. say <laughs> so, uh, what there, you know, if you're a small business, struggling, you're not alone. I mean, there, there's a multitude of businesses, small, medium, large that are struggling for the same reasons. And those reasons are not your fault. So it's going to be addressed. I don't know exactly how, but it definitely will have to be addressed and it will be addressed. Um, I think it's important to, you know, we're to try and inform people about developments and, and strategies to try to make it through this. We're here to support you for that. So I'd say at least get into the loop, information loop of um, knowing what is out there and being able to jump on it so that you make the cut if they run out of funds. Um, Definitely inform yourself, definitely avail yourself of the different help, types of help that are out there. And we're, we're one of those. We're not the only one, but we're definitely one of those. So I'm glad you brought that up because I am on a partnership with the state of California, the Governor's Small Biz Entrepreneurship Office, as well as several other organizations. 
um, uh, chambers, um, CBOs uh, in the state of California in this week, uh, and actually a call is coming up in a few minutes, where the governor's small business office um, is developing a website for small, diverse businesses in the state of California to go to to get information and resources. And um, Odo's, I believe, uh, Renaissance, uh, the Chambers, and several other small uh, nonprofit organizations, economic development organizations, are on that list to answer questions, be a resource for small businesses. And this has just been developed this week. Wonderful. That sounds great. So today is um, the governor's small biz office, um, entrepreneur uh, small biz office, is trying to look at resources to um, address for small micro businesses that have been overlooked by a lot of this funding or, you know, there's a lot of organizations, a lot of services, a lot. I was talking to a friend who's with the Black Realtors Association. I mean, there's a lot of realtors that are hurting financially um, mm -hmm. that uh, fit into that 50K and below scenario, right? And mm -hmm. so a um, lot of organizations, a lot of groups, and we really, ideally, I would love to see a statewide advocacy program for small um, home-based businesses, small uh, micro businesses, black uh, businesses that could kind of create a coalition to um, build together and deal with this, this epidemic, this challenge in the future, economic challenge in the future. And so we're going to be talking more about that um, moving forward in um, more partnership, more coalition building. So we can network and share resources and information like we're doing today. Um, and so I appreciate you being here again. Um, let me put my bifocals back on. Um, you can reach <laughs> Ms. Terry at the Renaissance Center at 650-321-2193. Uh, number directly, and you're probably going to get deluged with all these phone calls now, 650-468-0702, and you can find Terry at uh, T-E-R-R-I-E Crenshaw at yahoo.com. That's her email address if you have questions and you want to talk to her post trying to schedule an appointment to uh, apply for the PPE and the forgiveness program and understand the different aspects of, of the funding. And in the interim, we're going to pray for additional funding, additional grants, um, additional advocacy throughout the state, throughout the country. Um, we are um, just praying for everybody to um, hang in here and stay healthy and um, Terry come back if you want to come back and do an application demonstration I'd be happy to have you um, we need to have all of our resources um, and put this information out all over the place I know the chambers are doing stuff I've seen influencers doing stuff I'm posting grants on the Odo Silicon Valley page Mm -hmm. um, again, we just need to keep all our communication open. So any, any last words you want to share? Um, I would say that when I, when I talk to small businesses, I hear a lot of uh, apprehension. Uh, some people are feeling desperate. They're feeling abandoned. And I get that. And, you know, I think I just want to urge people, don't be afraid to reach out and get the help that is out there. It would be great if there was this one overarching um, organization or a source for information. There isn't. You have to kind of look at a lot of different things. You don't have to build infrastructure around this. Um, just need to, you know, I'm doing my best to gather resources, but also pay attention to other stuff. There's webinars out there to teach you. On the Renaissance Center site, we have, I, I did a webinar yesterday, a very short overview of the forgiveness process, because I know that's something that's causing people apprehension. So, 15 minutes, 
you want to go up on the site and watch it, as it should be up now or, or shortly, um, just to walk you through that process. And then in terms of the application process, probably that's something we'll um, go through on a one-by-one -one basis. But again, I'm here to in, uh, interface with the funder with you. I'm holding your hand all the way to the finish line. So don't, uh, don't let this opportunity pass you by. That's a good point. People need, uh, they need to know that there's resources out here that will uh, embrace them and follow them through the process and not just drop them in the black hole. That's been people's experiences in the past with going mm -hmm. to some of these economic development programs where if they don't meet the criteria, they don't get support to um, you know, look at other processes or look at contingency plans. And that's kind of why I'm here to research and identify um, resources that could potentially help them and, and guide them and get some mentoring and support. So let's all work together and empower one another. Um, you know, let's stay, let's stay healthy. Let self-care is really, really uh, key. I know I'm trying to do more meditation and, um, you know, just keeping my mind straight because there's so many different things and levels going on right now. And so sometimes I wake up and I'm, you know, it's like, okay, again, another crazy day. But we thank you for your time. Um, we're gonna have you come back and visit us in the future. We're gonna get you some referrals so people can get um, signed up, get more information. And we'll just keep, you know, the support going, the information going, keeping people empowered and lifted up. So. Again. I, I'm not sure I mentioned that there's no cost to services. Absolutely. That's a good point. No cost, freebies. It's actually illegal to charge to fill out the, unless you're an accountant, I understand, to fill out the application. That's, yeah, you know, there's a lot of scams out there uh, with people offering, if you pay them, you, know, you don't need that. Um, the free help is here and it's help that you can count on. Don't worry about that. So, Ms. Lisa? I will look forward to you making your appointment for your application. <laughs> <I'm scared. laughs> We're going to see you back, come back again um, next month and let's kind of give an update on where we are in this process and what else is new out here that maybe our entrepreneurs uh, and our small businesses can avail themselves of in the interim, stay safe, uh, stay sheltered in. And do you have a blast you rest a of the day? You too, Ashe. Ashe. <laughs> Give me one second.